Hello friends, Steve from Southern Illinois. Starting to warm up down here, which means the tomatoes are starting to pop, growing like weeds. It's been a rough week though. Um, yeah, the ERs I support have really been struggling because the hospitals that we transfer, the ICE intensive care units, don't have beds. So people with heart attacks have been having to wait for 24 hours before we can transfer them to a hospital with the technology they need. Strokes. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a rough week, okay? But that's not what I want to talk about today. You've heard about COVID until we're blue in the face, so either you are taking your precautions or you're not, okay? And um, I can be with that, okay? I'm not angry at the people who are not taking COVID seriously. they will have to deal with the consequences <clears throat> but the leaders the politicians the religious leaders the thought leaders the social media leaders those are the ones who are really going to have to answer for what's happening which brings me to today's topic um, the lesson for this week that we were studying was entitled from sinner to forgiven saint the topic was the judgment and I went into a lot of details that I just want to focus on well something personal because um, I want to tell you about a day of reckoning that happened in my life when I was 14, my brother and I left home to go to a boarding high school. Uh, we were living in a country that was politically unstable. There was a lot of violence going on. And my parents thought it would be better for us to be back here in the United States. <clears throat> so, we uh, crash landed into boarding school. Food was not too much of a problem because the school had a cafeteria and so you ate what you were given. It wasn't bad for me because I'm not a picky eater. My brother, on the other hand, yeah, yeah, let's just say that he, uh, he, picked, he picked what he ate and he ate what he picked. Um, we both found out that we were hard workers. But there was one life skill that I had really not figured out how to manage. It wasn't that I didn't know how to do laundry. It was just getting it done that was a problem. You see, there were only two washing machines for the entire boys' dorm. So about 75 guys who all had to do their own laundry two washers, 75 guys. Uh, so we, it had been arranged that uh, on certain days certain floors could do their laundry and um, yeah, I would let it pile up until um, it was necessary to do the laundry and I, I found ways to conserve on laundry soap. Uh, you wore shirts repeatedly until they needed washing visibly. Um, and thankfully, this was in the 70s, uh, the era of uh, polyester weaves, and uh, shirts didn't wrinkle, and pants didn't wrinkle. You could pile them in the corner and pick them up three days later. 
okay yeah i i know this is this is just who does this yeah uh, well i got away with it for about three months um, and um, i'm sure people noticed but i was new on campus and uh, i was kind of an introvert and a wallflower and yeah so I had my pile of laundry in one corner of corner of the dorm room and um, about every two weeks I'd take pick everything up go and stuff it down into the washing machine until the washing machine was full to the brim wash it and dry it and then uh, winter came and um, I was in an accident and hurt my back really bad. So bad that I ended up in bed for four weeks. After two weeks, the school nurse started visiting me every day. About the third visit, she noticed that I was no longer in a bed with sheets. You see the sh sheets had started to, to feel grimy after uh, three weeks of not being changed and me and being in bed constantly. And so I had pulled out my sleeping bag and I was in my sleeping bag. And two weeks later when she came back to check on me, I was still in the sleeping bag. And uh, she said, Steve, have you done laundry at all? I was on the third floor of the dorm. The laundry was in the basement. Walking up and down the stairs was just more than I could manage. So, no, I hadn't done, done laundry for a month. And she says, Steve, we've got to find a solution here. You see, I could no longer keep my dirty laundry hidden uh, <clears throat> because she was in my room and it was all visible. You know, we all have dirty laundry in our lives. Broken relationships things we've said, things we've done. We can talk about them as regrets. We can talk about them as guilt. But the simple fact is that all of us have done things that would merit a day of reckoning. Now, we're very, we're very, very good at deflecting here, okay? It's not my fault my marriage broke up. It's her fault, okay? Um, you know, he said, she said, they said, the boss. We have all kinds of ways of deflecting the responsibility onto other people. But the touchstone for today is the certainty of a day of reckoning. The Bible says that it's appointed to all men to die, and then comes the judgment. That's right. The touchstone that the, the people in the Bible lived with was that when they died, there would be an accounting a day of reckoning. And the Bible is very clear that the judge is God and God knows not only exactly what you did, nothing can be hidden from him. He knows what you thought and what you felt, your emotions, um, your justifications, your rational processes, and your irrational processes. He's right in the room, folks. Right in here. He knows what's going on. And there's no hiding who we are and what we've done.
There's a faithful record being kept. And all of us are going to stand before the judgment seat of God. Now that goes counter to what a lot of Christians are taught today, that once we accept Christ, we no longer face the judgment. That doesn't really jive with what the Bible has to say. It's a way of making ourselves feel secure. Something that's even more unsettling for Christians is that the Bible states clearly that we are judged by our works, not our intention, not our beliefs. We are judged by our works. Belief that does not change our lives doesn't count. Because from the perspective of the Bible, that's not belief. Well, it is. The devils believe and tremble, but they don't repent. And that's what an unchanged life is, a lack of repentance. This is a painful touchstone on the face of it, that we're going to face an accounting. But I want to share a couple of things that, for me, make it not painful. Okay? Let me go back to my story about dirty laundry. What happened next? Well, Mom Brass, as we called the school nurse, came back the next day and she just scooped me up as in literally scooped me up, helped me out of bed, helped me get dressed, and took me to her home. I never saw that sleeping bag again, and I think that she disposed of it. Uh, but for the next year, I lived in her home while she nursed me back to health, physically, emotionally, and mentally. That's what a Savior is. That's what Jesus wants to do in every one of our lives today. And you see... <laughs> Once mom had done that to, for me, I wasn't embarrassed by my dirty laundry. Well, I made sure I didn't have dirty laundry from that point on. I still had to do my own laundry at her house. She didn't take over those things for me. But I... I <laughs> the love that she'd shown me I really wanted to please her. And that's kind of the relationship I have with Jesus. Okay? Um, that is the relationship I have with Jesus. It's not one of fear or trying to escape judgment. It's appreciation for what he's done for me and, and a desire to measure up, to follow in his footsteps, to be like him. When we face the judgment seat of God, beside, standing beside us is going to be our Savior, the one who scooped us up, the one who has been helping us. And he's going to be defending us. There are only two lawyers in the courtroom of heaven, one who accuses us and one who defends us. Which one is standing beside us depends on the choices we have made in this life. If we accept Jesus, he'll be standing beside us. If we choose not to accept Jesus, then we will be having to face the record of our lives with an accuser next to us. And that, my friends, is not a comfortable thing. Dirty laundry not something we want to talk about very much. And yet, 
something we all have. You ready to get rid of your dirty laundry, friends? I think you know what to do. Please be safe. Be prudent this week. I know that Southern Illinois is not the only place where COVID is rearing its head again. I'll see you next week. Keep looking up.